Mental illness is an epidemic, and far too often it's fatal. I learned that the hard way. Um, I'm not just going to tell you that we're sick. I know you already know that. I know you know what to do when you are mentally unwell. You've already been told about counseling, medication, vitamins. Those are all measures for people who have already fallen into their dark spaces. What I think we need to focus on are their preventative measures. So much of mental illness is chemical. I know that. I know it is not something that you can wish away, but I do know there are ways that it can be managed. And again, I know you already know about the individualistic preventative measures too. Eating better, sleeping more as if it's a choice, talking about your feelings as if it's that easy. <laughs> but I think what we need to focus on more are the systems in place that lead us toward excess stress and less time for meaningful social connections. As a student heading into her fifth year of post-secondary education at the University of British Columbia's Okanagan campus, I know the university system. These systems can seem so massive and out of reach that we assume they are unchangeable, but I argue that they aren't. I have depression and minor anxiety, neither of which proliferated due to the stress of university courses, but that's just me. I also know that so many of my friends have talked to me about how university courses can be so stressful that we feel inadequate at a time when we are supposed to be empowered by our new knowledge. My interest in this topic sparked by the loss of a good friend to mental illness about a year ago and the countless conversations I've had with friends who feel that the pressure of university can feel impossible and draining rather than fueling their passions. It's not that I believe professors don't understand the pressure that students are under. I know they know that we are sometimes mentally unwell and that we face a lot of pressure, but I think what they can do is be more proactive in the ways that they are structuring their courses to produce more conducive um, space for positive mental health. I primarily view the stressors coming from three areas, financial stress, heavy consequences, and time constraints. Students have to pay crazy amounts of money for textbooks. I once paid $200 for a textbook that was said to be mandatory and I never even cracked it. This is on top of the parking fees, gym fees, and tuition fees that we have to pay, which could take up the duration of an entirely different talk. On top of this, participation marks can be really stressful for some students, as it can be really stressful to put up your hand and talk in front of an entire class of people, even if you are fully engaged. Another thing that I think can be detrimental is very, very extensive late policies. So in one of my classes, we had an assignment due at the very beginning of class, and the professor put up a massive clock for everyone to see. Students were bursting through the back doors, running up to the front with their assignments just seconds past the due date, and the entire class would watch as the professor took their paper aside and marked it late, docking them 10% for mere seconds. The most perplexing practice on our campus that I've ever heard of is what students in the Faculty of Management call Management Hell Week. <laughs> it's not just, it's kind of funny, but it's not that funny at the same time. Um, <laughs> Um, so, in their third year of study, in the week following reading break, um, students are given one midterm per day for a week. Not only are they stripped of the chance to take a real break during the reading break, they also are bombarded with stress the following week. In addition to this, time constraints can be really stressful for students. We are given multiple readings for a single course, or really lengthy readings, and students are expected to do those on top of their readings and requirements for their other classes. This can be discouraging for students, and they sometimes don't even try to get their readings done because they know they likely will not get through all of them. Another detrimental practice is late exam times. Some students have exams as late as December 22nd, and for some who decide to go home, which can be on the other side of the world, the travel time is almost longer than the time they get to spend with their families, and it sometimes becomes not even worth the cost of travel. And they oftentimes will even be missing their cultural or religious celebrations. Some of these things that I've brought up are complex problems. And for these, I have some complex solutions and feedback. For some big thinking, I consulted with some big brains. I spoke with students in various faculties, and I also spoke with a couple of my favorite professors, Dr. Ilya Parkins and Dr. George Grinnell. They let me in on some ideas from the other side of the game. 
and some things that they've implemented in their classes. To start, I'd like to focus on transparency and how important it is to remember that we are all just human beings. It is so important to have transparency in your classes for the professors. It is so important for students to understand that professors are just people too. And in this, professors are also in a place of privilege and power and they can use that power in such a positive way. I cannot express the importance of seeing oneself in the, in the readings. There are a wide variety of scholars in your field that we never hear about. It is not good enough to simply express readings from cisgender, heterosexual, able-bodied white men. When one is only exposed to white men's teachings, it can become difficult to see yourself in the work, and that only adds excessive stress as you feel like you have to prove yourself further than other students who maybe align themselves with the stories introduced in class. Beyond this is the importance of doing more than just a territory acknowledgement. It is not good enough to simply state that we are learning on stolen land. There are various ideas that do not simply align with colonial values. We should be hearing the teachings of Indigenous scholars and elders rather than just hearing the stories of those that align with colonial values. And in the spirit of remembering that students are just people, it's also important to recognize that we have different learning styles and struggles. There should be different means of assessment so students can work in a means that works well for them and expresses their understanding to the best of their potential. I want to leave you with eight takeaway ideas that can be implemented more quickly and without as much effort on the end of the professor, as I know that they have their own pressures and struggles of their own. The first is a practice of Dr. Ilya Parkins. She has a four-day leeway policy, which means that you can hand in one of your assignments four days late or four of your assignments one day late, and that flexibility allows for you to work within your own schedule. On top of this, posting readings online is very beneficial for students. We have a massive amount of journals and texts online at our fingertips. So if we can avoid prescribing pricey textbooks, the students would really appreciate it. Next, I want to suggest that you do a quiz on the syllabus so that students have to learn more about the resources that professors are required to put on their syllabuses. Fourth, I want to suggest giving time in classes for group projects as it can become very difficult for students to find time to meet outside of their classrooms. I also believe that there should be multiple modes of expressing your participation. I know some students who are clearly engaged and willing to talk about the material outside of class time, but I know that they have a hard time putting up their hand in class as it can be very anxiety inducing. I also believe that lowering late policies is very important. For some students, when you simply cannot get something in on time, you should not be docked a large percentage or be given 0% for handing something in just a minute late. I also have a professor who brings healthy snacks into class or allows students to eat during exams as it can become difficult to remember something as simple as eating when one is bombarded with so much stress. And finally, I have one professor who also helps by getting students to come up with the questions for the exam before the course so that before the test students are given minimal surprises so that there is not the stress of studying the wrong thing. While I understand that university must be challenging in order to test students' understanding, I also know that so many brilliant students are put at a disadvantage through testing and practices that are unfair. I understand that there are elements that must be included, but I do think there are things that need to be reconsidered. Students are not just students. Professors are not just professors. We cannot be expected to expend energy into one singular role in our multifaceted lives. We have to stop treating students like they are numbers, statistics, percentages, and tuition checks, and start treating them like they are human beings. Thank you.